Welcome to Skills with Mahesh. Today we are starting a very interesting series on cryptocurrency and we will mainly talk about Bitcoin. This series consists of three episodes. This first episode deals with how come Bitcoin emerged as a parallel currency. The second episode is about Bitcoin, how it works. And third episode is about technology behind the Bitcoin. I'm your host, Dr. Mahesh Kumar, and let us talk about first thing, that is how come Bitcoin emerged as a parallel currency. Well, it is not a hidden fact that people in some countries don't trust their own currency issued by their own governments. Some people are skeptical that their governments are not doing a good job. And they believe that governments are over issuing the currency and there is actually an oversupply of money and their money can actually fail. If you are a person of that category, you will think of other ways. If you are a traditionalist, this is how I put it. If you are a traditionalist, you will go the gold way. So you may think it has happened in history. For example, Zimbabwean currency has fallen and currencies in many other countries became worthless. For example, after Second World War, Germany's currency became worthless. People were putting these failed currencies as wallpaper on their walls or were using this paper money to burn their stoves because it had virtually become worthless. So it can happen to our currencies too. If you are that skeptical, you think of alternate ways. And if you are traditionalist, you will go the gold way. I will buy gold. I will store gold. And when the day comes, when we get up and see the value of currency has gone and our financial system has broken, banks are not giving us our money, then with physical gold, you will be better off than thousands of people around you. This is traditionalist path. And then there are people who are futuristic and they are also skeptical the same way. And they are also trying to do the same thing, but they are using different tools. They are technologically creating something that is substitute for paper currency. So Bitcoin is invention of these tech savvy minds or I should say futuristic minds who are thinking that we do not trust governments, who do not trust fiat currency because it is not backed by gold anymore. Because for example, in US on 15th August, 1971, they gave up the gold standard. So whenever the government wants, it can print money. It does not need to be backed by gold anymore, but they are not traditionalist. The people with this point of view are not traditionalist. They do not want to go the gold way because going the gold way is like going back 2000 years in time. They think we have pro programming capabilities. Let us find new ways and through convergence of information technologies, we can create a new currency that is not controlled by governments. That is where the Bitcoin story starts. Bitcoin has fixed money supply. People like it. And by year 2040, it will be maxed out to approximately 21 million Bitcoins. This idea appeals to many people who think that central banks print money and increase money supply anytime. Whenever there is a governmental need, they do so. It leads to over money supply. 
and it can eventually erode money value. When too much money is chasing too few goods, the value of money would definitely erode. But that will not happen in case of Bitcoins. This is what the proponents of Bitcoin say. This is one of the reasons people like Bitcoin. I always think Bitcoin is currency by the revolutionaries and for the revolutionaries. And when I say that, I mean that Bitcoin is created by somebody who thinks that government is not doing a good job for human beings. So this revolutionary ideology led to invention of Bitcoin. This is hidden in the fact that there is no central place or government that controls parallel currency called Bitcoin. It is controlled in a decentralized manner. And there are miners who verify and authenticate transactions after every 10 minutes and get paid for the job. These miners are also paid for working on hash algorithms and creating and mining new Bitcoins. So it's all different. It's not controlled by government. It's a cryptocurrency system that controls the money supply. So it is a tech guy's mind. Satoshi Nakamoto is the person who created the Bitcoin. With this philosophy, with this technology, a parallel currency emerged and we call it Bitcoin. Bitcoin is becoming popular in many parts of the world. Bitcoin is becoming a popular currency in many parts of the world where people expect an open society, but they don't get it. So they feel that their representatives are not respecting their rights. And with this rebellious intention, a parallel currency was set up. So they thought, okay, let us set up a parallel world economy, a parallel world financial system. If Bitcoin becomes a popular currency, a widely used medium of exchange, then banks and financial institutions will be hit hard. So it is currency by the revolutionaries. It is a parallel financial system that exists in the world that is not controlled by one government. It is decentralized. And there is something called blockchain, which is core to the system of Bitcoin. And it is decentralized and controlled by many miners. It is a unique system. And look at the mobility of capital it has created. Bitcoin has created a mobility of capital never heard before. And we talk of mobility of capital and we talk of mobility of labor. There are so many restrictions, for example, in mobility of labor. As labor can't move from one part of the world to another part of the world without going through all the restrictions, visa restrictions of moving. And the same is true for money. So mobility of money is restricted under current world financial system. Money takes time, a week or two, to move from one part of the world to another. But with Bitcoin, there is absolutely no problem or restriction with that. Money moves freely. So there is absolute 100% mobility of capital using Bitcoin. And everybody who has a revolutionary mind in a positive way or a negative way easily understands the notion, understands this concept of Bitcoin easily. You transact a Bitcoin and you can divide it even to the millionth part of it. And you can send someone even five cents across the world, which is not possible through existing a system of banking transfers. People give different reasons why they like Bitcoin. Some people say there is no exchange cost, also known as transaction cost. That impresses many people. Technologically, they have made it look like this, but I don't know. There may be some hidden costs. 
which is paid by the sender or receiver and or maybe that is built in and piles up and gets incorporated in the cost of Bitcoin itself. So the next uh, Bitcoin is more expensive than previous. Anyhow, Bitcoin has rose from a value of 8 cents to a value of $13,000 over the period of time. So there is definitely something to it. So in the next episode, we will discuss about how Bitcoin works and the technology behind the Bitcoin. Thanks for joining. Keep learning and practicing. See you later.